TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. Internet wasn't strong enough to be live, man. I, we'll be back live very soon, man. But anyway, uh, you can still leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right above me, if we do go live and you miss it, that's where you can catch it. Patreon, of course, man. Monday through Friday, uh, we post stuff we can't watch on YouTube. We just watch Derek on there. Don't forget, we also got merch. Got mine on. Uh, you can see all of this in the link tree that is in the description. You just click the link tree, and then that list come up, man. This is my boy, Wendell. What's good with you, Wendell? How are you, my boy? Let me hit the like button first. Leave a comment before we even start, man, because that's how I'm coming. Pause. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's a lot of options here. Um, where the fire emoji at? Yeah. Fire. There you go. A couple times like that, man, you know? Show my support. The homeless neighbors of the seaside rich and famous. Okay. Homeless neighbors, man. Okay. Ah. Got it. Where is this? Welcome to Sandbanks, a playground of the rich and famous and one of the most expensive places to live in the UK. And what a beautiful sight it is here on the beach on this sunny October afternoon. It is beautiful. Wherever this is, it's nice. Sandbanks. I've been told by people that watch the channel and people that live in the area, but just a few miles from the ultra wealth of Sandbank, just down the road in Bournemouth, there are pockets of deprivation and homelessness, which really do contrast from the wealth. This guy is very well spoken. He's really passionate about this, man. I get like, I, I go watch this. Like, he'll be at 100K views, I mean, 100K subs in no time. But I, I say like two months, two months or less, he'll be at 100K easily. <laughs> wealth and the lifestyle here on Sandbanks. You looking like Miami. What the fuck going on? <laughs> this is Miami? So as much as I would like to spend the day no more pulses. sunning myself on this beautiful beach, I'm going to jump in the car, we're going to head a couple of miles down the road, and we're going to see what life is really like for the people that are struggling in Bournemouth. Let's see the contrast between the rich and the poor, just a few miles from each other on the south coast. Let's go. Great editing. I think a good solid rule you can tell by how salubrious a place is, by how it- Hey Siri, what is, what is salubrious? Oh, favorable to promoting health, health, healthful, all right. Expensive for parking is how much they think they can get away with for one hour's parking. Here at Sandbanks, pay and display, two pounds 80. What a ripoff! Probably the most expensive parking I've seen on my travels around the UK yet. Do you think Harry Redknapp? That's expensive? You know how much we pay for an hour <laughs> in Miami? One of the famous residents of Sandbanks, do you think he can afford 280 for his parking just to pop down and get his coffee by the beach? Why is it skipping like that? I am Bobby Suarez with SeltaBobby.com and Sorry, sir. Now, Bobby, I do not care. It's looking like Miami wow. for real. Oh, Admiral's Court. Brutalism, right next to natural beauty. The beauty and the beast. Wait, is this? This look like North Miami. So I'm just on the beach here, Bournemouth, the main beach here, right next to the pier filming some b-roll and then I've noticed these tents that are just under the pier and there's a chap here so I'm gonna go and see if he's sleeping rough under the pier or if it's just um where he hangs out for the day I'll be sleeping that's definitely it's about the air shows this is definitely how I be in Miami man like underneath the like viaducts and the, underneath the highways like six weeks but I've been homeless since the week before COVID hit. okay 
I was an assistant manager at Pizza Express in Banstead in Surrey. Uh, just moved into a new flat and um, my mum bought a fridge freezer. I hadn't got house insurance yet. Let me see, because I don't know if that's his video or my video. Mine's only a 480p. And woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning and the whole place is on, on fire. Jeez. Well, like Grenfell. Uh, exactly like, the same story. Yeah, yeah. like Grenfell, yeah. And um, so I did an arson investigation report, found out it was a short circuit in the fridge freezer. And ever since then, I've been getting put in weird places like temporary accommodation and supported accommodation. Yeah. But most of these people that are homeless at the moment, most of them have like mental health issues or drug, or drug issues. And I keep getting housed with people who are like hearing voices and all this other stuff not to say that it's, you know i have any issue with that but i'm quite sane and i don't I do a tell. lot of, i don't do a lot of drugs i smoke my weed and shit like that but yeah. that's about it and so yeah i came down here because i was i was basically under like a lot of um intimidation from gangs and like stuff in london in like croydon area yeah. so i was like you know what? i'm not dealing with this kind of stuff anymore so i just come down here i've been down here about six weeks but i've been working with half time and a couple of other places and they're going to put me in a normal like a normal house with yeah. like normal people. Yeah. So I should be housed within the next three weeks. So but, you, but you've been sleeping here on the beach for six I've weeks. Been sleeping here for six and why weeks. did you choose this spot? Because it's it's away from the town centre. Um, I like the beach. Um, my son lives in California. I spent ten years in California. You've got a bit of an accent now. Yeah. As soon as you said California, it yeah, came I out. Yeah. I lived there. For, well, I lived in America sixteen years when I was seventeen, then came back. I'm Thirty-three. I'm forty-three now. Oh, that's crazy. I'm just now noticing how he don't really got like the accent is not. It's there, but it's not the UK one. And yeah, the, the the plan is to you know get get housed, get grounded, get a base here, and then go back to see my son, and establish like communication with my ex-wife and stuff like that. Yeah, so I was having this problem before too when I was doing vlogs. I think your frames per second is off a little, or your shutter speed, one of the two. You gotta match it to your editing software. If you're shooting in sixty, you have to edit and. You know what I'm saying? Like, something's off. Something's, something's going on. I don't blame anybody else for my situation. You know, I probably, if I'd have managed myself a little different or... Or the resolution just might be too high for your editing software to be handled. Something, something's up. <laughs> I can't pinpoint it exactly, but some, you know, one I, of those... I had a close relationship with my family, but that's all, you know, water under the bridge. I'm 43 years old, and I don't want to, like, be a burden. I don't want... I don't want to... And a lot of these places that he, you get these supported and sheltered and temporary accommodation, you, the housing benefit goes straight to them. Then they also pay a service charge. So it's like they're double dipping on on people who are in a less in a more vulnerable yeah. position. So it's all about I'd money. I'd rather not take the government's money and live out here and not have to answer to. This is an honest guy. This is an honest guy right here. Just in a terrible situation right now. You know, certain rules and regs. So how are you surviving if you're um, not taking the government's money? Like, are well, people giving you donations uh, and stuff? And... Uh, no, I, I got a, a hit and run case. Oh, jeez, uh, man. Yeah, I get, I get money. Yeah. Basically, I got uh, my calf got shifted there. I've got a titanium rod down my tibia and my fibula. I've got two plates in each ankle. Yeah. So I get a bit of money. Do the authorities move you on? Um, Obviously, like, I've you're noticed, right here in the middle of all yeah, this. Yeah, so. well, I have noticed they have moved a few other people along, and they haven't moved me along because, from what they, from what I understand, it has to be, like, from the king to get you off the beach. Oh, really? This is actually considered anything past the concrete is the king's land. Is that a little loophole? It's a little loophole. So the king's got to come down here himself well, and he kick you to, off? No, he, <laughs> basically, he has, to, he has to stamp and authorize it, write a letter that day, and it has to be delivered, delivered that day. Wow. Oh, wow. And I heard, I learned that from one of the OG Big Issue guys, uh, yeah. Carl in town. And he was he used to be on the street like 20 years ago. Is so, that true? No, so, because they did move me along from there. But then, you know, because I'm not really a, a threat or, or yeah. anything like that. Plus, yeah. I love the beach, so I yeah. keep it quite clean. Like, yeah, you know, see, it is clean, there's, yeah. There's no, you got no your own track. washing up station. Yeah, and then yeah. I just I take it up there, the yeah. little thing up there. But, you know, I do, I do use a lot of the, uh, the services. There are, like... Um, Lansdowne Church, In Touch, they do they do like lunches and food. Today you got We Are Humans from Boscombe, they come up and do food at Boots. So it's like you can always get food. I've got, I've even got, well, I'm, it's a bit of a mess, but I'll show you. Yeah, sure, I appreciate it, man. 
is a bit of a mess, but like it was pretty cold last night, I won't lie. Yeah, you're just getting to that time of year now where, I mean, we've, we've had a bit of an Indian summer, haven't we, as well? Yeah. So you've been all right. But... And we had the heat wave a little yeah. bit, but I mean, you know, I've got loads of food. Yeah. Oh, you've got a right you know? setup here. And then here's like, my medical paper. I see Weedabix. Bro, can I get my yeah. passport back again? Yeah. But you know, I've got my little suitcase back there. I did have a camping stove, but then someone nicked it. Oh shit. That's, so, that's, that's, that's the one like drawback. Is that like the middle of the night? Like somebody will come yeah. and just like take it while you're asleep? Yeah, like Mohammed had, had got some, some clothes and a tent dropped off to him. So I grabbed the tent and put it over here because people, they're gonna have opportunists, man, you know? Yeah. Especially in, like I've noticed, you know, people who... Yeah, when you live in Skint, man, it's dog eat dog, ain't it? Who have a bit of a drug habit. Let's say like a heavy drug habit, yeah. you know, that if it's not nailed down and it's worth some money, then they'll go, they'll take it. I've got my yoga mat, you know, I've got little hang pros and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. It's nothing major, but... And shelter, I've just noticed if it, if it pisses it down, yeah. you've got shelter in yeah, there. This, this, this here is probably, he's probably the best part. Yeah. Because he's a bit further away, like, it does come, it does, the weather does come, like, rushing in this way. Yeah. So, I mean, let's see, I hung this up last night. Yeah. Look, like that's dry already. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like I said, it's not ideal for a lot of people. I mean, I, I know a lot of people that wouldn't be able to live like this. Yeah. You know, but I am one of them. I could. I mean, but when you're back against the wall, you got to do what you got to do as a man, as a, as a human being. Oh, so. That. Then I got one a waterproof cover there. This is a top. That was a top from another tent that someone left. I wouldn't recommend it, you know. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I don't know how to live any other life but my life. So it's like I wouldn't tell. I mean, I can always recommend and give advice, but at the end of the day, it's your life and how you want to live. I don't want to live on the beach. I mean, shit, I wake up, I got to scratch my head. There's yeah. like sand everywhere. You get sand and fucking everything. Yeah, you man. never <laughs> ever feel clean. <laughs> but you know, I, like I said, I go and take showers. You know, if I, if it comes down to it, I'll have a dip in the ocean, go over there. Sandy bum. There's a cold shower. Crazy, wake yeah. you. It does, definitely Holes. wakes you up. Yeah. But like I said, you know, even in the winter time, I'm I'm not. I'm not scared of being outside in the winter. I've been out. I've been out. Let's see, three years now. This will be my fourth. Yeah, my fourth Christmas on the street. Like you know, like people say, you can laugh or you can cry, and I'm like, well, you, know, you can laugh and cry, man, because sometimes it's, that's how it is. You know, life is great. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah. Are those Beats by Dre headphones or? It's a pain in the ass at the same time, but. I'm all right, man. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I appreciate that though. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, what's I never caught your name? Layton. Layton, Layton. Thomas. Yeah. yeah, Wendell. Nice Wendell. to meet you, man. Nice to yeah. meet you, man. Nice to meet you, man. Breathing the air, enjoying the sea. I mean, yeah. Look at all these people having fun, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not fucking about. These people are enjoying themselves. They are, yeah. Look at the families. Look yeah. at the good weather. Natural beauty. Like, we're all far more similar than we're made to understand. Like, and people these days, like, yeah. they're only a couple of bad paychecks away from, oh, from this situation. Can be difficult. But I can tell you're trying to put a positive slant on your situation yeah, talking a, to me. Trust me, I'm not putting a brave face on anything. I just said it how it is, really. I know, I, I know it's hard. You know? Right? Yeah. But like I said, good guy. Know, I'm not hurting anyone. No. You know, I'm not, for the most part, hurting myself at all. You know, it's just a bit. He's a good guy, man. If he made a GoFundMe for him, like, I'd help. A bit sandy, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I get some fucking everything. Yeah. But no, I want people to just know, like, you know, we're not out, like a lot of people who are out here that I've met, they're not out here because they choose to be. They're out here because, you know, that, like I said, they're cracked out on the heroin or on the, whatever it might be. They drink too much, you know, and, you know, it's just, it's sad, man, because I've, I've seen a lot of people pass in the last few years. I'm not here to make Bournemouth a bad place. I think the place is lovely. Just chopped a hot dog like we wasting food. Pause. They actually have barbecue grills right there. Okay, Flat -top what? Grills. Uh, public municipal yeah. barbecue grills. I actually, haven't seen them since I was in Australia. Yeah, and you could use them. So we used to, when I first got down here, because we were short of money, me and a friend of mine, not really a friend, just like another homeless guy basically. We got sausages and peppers and onions, and we made Philly cheesesteaks. Okay. And we did like a Subway thing. I so love a Philly, I, I yeah, love a Philly cheese steak, man. And I love to cook, so I. There are better like, ones than Subway. <laughs> yeah, but I saw like six inches for a fiver and like a. Really? Yeah, yeah. The whole thing with People a tiger, came up. tiger baguettes. So like you're a good thing. cook. Yeah, bro. Yeah. This is just another day, mate. Yeah. Life goes on, isn't it? We've all got to survive. Nice one, bro. 
sort of injecting bloody pot. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's an individual, but they should all gather together to realise that there's a bigger fucking picture out there. What were you saying? Like? I've got to introduce you to the, the OG of the, the OG homeless king right here. Okay. This is Carl. The OG homeless king. Don't introduce, like, don't, I would not want to be introduced as that, but come on, let's talk about it. That, that mobility scooter he's on, yeah. a couple bought it for him. There's me and Prince Yeah, he just told me, yeah. And that's Gaza, and that's Stephen Bartlett, and that's Princess Charlotte. Wow. And that's me. Well, I was sat here, yeah. selling a big issue, when someone told me that Prince William's about to turn up over there in prep manager. So I decided to go and walk on over, and as I got to the door, Paul Gascoigne was standing there with me. Yeah. And uh, the prince walked up. Yeah. So I said, I've got an appointment to see you. I've got a royal appointment. I'll do the big issue. If you bring him in, bring him in. That's Mr. Gascoigne. Yeah. And then there's Mr. Bartlett on to the back. Yeah. <laughs> okay, he is OG ish, though. And, and, that's and, Princess Charlotte. and a big picture of you. Yeah, that's a picture of me stood over there. It's got my story of why I do the big issue. If you read here, it, it says, I can hardly walk properly. I am waiting to get my pip because I'm going to then get a disability scooter. Yeah. Right? Somebody read this. This come out last Monday at 10, 10 o'clock in the morning I started. 20 past 10, an old man and old woman come and bought this magazine off me. Half an hour later, can I take you for coffee, Cole? Yeah. Took me to the mobility shop up the road there, Bridges. Yeah. £2,199 they paid for it. Wow. And this is like... That's a blessing, man. That's why, man, if you ever put, when you put yourself out there in them, them situations where you feel like, like, dang, like, I don't really want to put myself out here, but, like, let me try to put myself out there, man, people will help. The world is not 100% lost, man. There are good people out there. Like, kind of like where a lot of the crackers hang out. Okay. Because there's a lot of crack dealing buildings, like, right around here. Yeah. So, and then the problem with, like, that is, from what I realize, is a lot of people that get on crack, they end up needing something to come down. So people say, but then that's why they do the heroin, to yeah. bring them down. Yeah. But then they get physically, biologically addicted to the heroin. Yeah. So you're living out of a tent yeah. down on Westcliff? Yeah, I must have been the only working homeless person in Bournemouth, probably. Yeah. Three months in a tent, working in sandbanks, the fourth richest area in the world. Decorating, you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Decorating the houses of sandbanks yeah. for living out of a tent yeah. just down the road. Yeah, yeah. That just shows the juxtaposition. That's a slap in the face. I go to work every day mad if I don't like it. Like, I wouldn't be... I, I get it. You got a job. You make it the best out of it. But, like, I would feel some type of way. Position in this country, doesn't it? Mm. I did try, but then a few wild nights here and there. Missed a few mornings. Lost my job. Yeah. I've been recommended or maybe warned against going to Boscombe, which is apparently the roughest part. Kind of, of look like California. So I'm going to go there, keep my uh, camera a little bit more subtle on myself, and see what Boscombe's like. Yeah, do I, is it safe for me to go into Boscombe with this camera? Your laugh says it all. You should be all right for, for a while. Just don't <laughs> outstay my welcome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's any, a bit. It's all Boss Vegas, isn't it? Mind. What's Boscombe like? Few words. <laughs> <laughs> nice words or real words? Whatever, real. Shit all. Absolute awesome. Full of smackheads. Okay. Uh, not lot. Is it safe for me to walk in with my camera? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's not so sure. I maybe. feel like listening to this one. I, I wouldn't go anywhere past eight with that. So I've just walked for two miles or so, but it is from Bournemouth Pier in the distance up to Boscombe Pier. And it's certainly a very different spectacle. It's concrete, utilitarian structure. It's quite foreboding, it's not very welcoming. And I hope it's not a sinister welcome to the town of Boscombe, which is basically a part of Bournemouth now, but also kind of seen as its own place. So I'm gonna walk up into Boscombe now and see if it really is as rough an area. Yeah, he out here really taking chances. The people in Bournemouth told me. Flash restaurants, beautiful beach. People nice. having fun on the beach. But apparently an infamous rough neighborhood just up ahead. Look at this architecture. It's, um, it's almost I'm like- I'm a big architectural guy. Like I love architecture. I don't know what happened, like why, but I do. Spanish colonial architecture. It's all right. But I've got a feeling that maybe at this crossroads here, it all starts to go a bit awry. 
Them and them inconsiderate five tell hosted. There they go. <laughs> So welcome to Boscombe folks, this is the infamous rough neighbourhood of Bournemouth. Do my hat smell? Oh my god. That I've been warned about. Let's see what it's like wandering around the town centre. The first thing I'll say is that the meat market is a sign of a good old traditional place in the UK. The butcher here selling his meat on the high street. Chill. <laughs> Pause. Oh, I haven't seen that since I was in the yeah, Midlands. Big trays of lamb chops. How are you, mate? Good yes, mate. Yeah, I'm just uh, cruising around Boscombe, showing it to the people on YouTube. Oh, thank you, mate. And I haven't seen a meat market since I was back in the Midlands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what in the Midlands, isn't it? These are a dying breed. Yeah. yeah. You see, mate? Are you here every day? Or? Every Saturday. Yeah. Every Saturday, mate. I'll do one of them and the last one of them. I'll do the two for Thursday. There is nothing. I would just feel some type of way if I went to go buy some meat and he just announced my meat package, my meat, my meat order over the intercom like that. I'm trying to buy meat for myself and you just putting it out there in the world what type of meat that I'm purchasing. You know what I'm saying? My meat order is my meat order. And that I would do to make you feel my been in Boscombe for a couple of minutes obviously it's quite rough around the edges but it reminds bad. me a lot of some of the towns in the Midlands so I quite like it a lot of character street markets I'll be honest with you folks Boscombe might be a bit rough but there are far less boarded up shops than there are in many seaside yeah, it's nice this place has character towns that are generally considered to be far more upmarket than this I like graffiti and art too. So what's life like in Boscombe? People have told me it's a really rough area, but I kind of like it. To be honest, mate, it is a rough area because of all the drug addicts and crackheads who are all across the streets and that, do you know what I mean? Street corners causing shit and that, do you know what I mean? And it's not nice for children to be around like this. You could tell that's his son. They both moving the exact same. Arms just swinging everywhere. Like, chill out, both of y'all. I mean, well, not the kid. Be a child, but this guy. Yeah. You see? Yeah. Why, why do we need to be brought up in a livelihood like this yeah. at the end of the day? I will say that I do this all around the UK. And, it's and there's, there's less boarded up shops is, is than it, many it, other yeah, places. Yeah, it's everywhere. Do you know what? You get all that stuff around. Exactly. Every, I've lived here, there, and everywhere. Do you know what I mean? You get it. Oh, I love Boscombe. Yeah. I absolutely love it. I think it's cracking. There's good people, there's bad people, but everywhere you go, like you say, if you've been places, I bet you see it. You get yeah. good, nice people come along. Of other people that I think, do you know, so I'll stay away from you. Yeah. Do you know, you know your own crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think from being here just about an hour, there's a good sense of community. Yes. There's a lot there of is. small businesses, which is always a great sign. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, th I don't think it's as bad as people have told me in Bournemouth. No, no, it's not. They do need to bring the patrols out. Bournemouth. I think Window, man, I've been doing this a long time. I think Window has the best grasp on what he's doing and exactly how to do it and show what we want to see. Just went to the street to, okay. to make it a bit more lively. Sorry, yeah. he almost swung his arm in that lady. I told him he'd be swinging him arms, don't he? He loose with it. <laughs> what were you saying, mate? Bournemouth. No, Bournemouth's worth. Have you been, been around Bournemouth? Yeah, I've been all around Bournemouth. Yeah, yeah. No, that's even just looks a state, doesn't it? Are you struggling to? So we're getting more and more hood. I see some tendency, some hood. Bournemouth is quite clearly different to some of the smaller seaside towns that I've visited recently. It's a much larger conurbation, so along with the infrastructure, which is a lot larger, it also has a lot of big town, big city problems that come with it. The homeless problem is larger. It also seems a little bit more aggressive on the streets. Wandering around with Leighton, I can feel that there's a little bit of um, like an edge on the streets, although I've met some really kind and welcoming people. But it's also a really beautiful place and it's it's so sad to see the division in society again in this much larger seaside town. Andy, right, nice Tom. to meet you. Nice How to you doing? meet you. Yeah. Guys, can we sort Seth out? He's not been through yet. We've been 
serving the people since the first week of the scamdemic. I can't call it a pandemic because it you was You're welcome to say whatever you want. Yeah. Um, so at that time, they put pe- the homeless into B&Bs, hotels, stuff like that, with no facilities for washing the clothes, getting clothes, no way of cooking for themselves. All the shops were shut. They couldn't even go out shoplifting a sandwich, you know what I mean? And then they put them into these hotels and actually we we treat prisoners and animals better than we treat our, our human beings. I was homeless myself when I landed here. Um, but they took them off the streets and put them in hotels and things of that nature. I used to, my first bed set I got, I used to go to the Asda's, I'd buy the reduced veg, the reduced bread, I'd take her home to my bed set, I'd get my big pan out, I'd make a soup and I'd come out and feed the homeless on a night. But I've got a bit more complex than what I do, we do hot meals, we do clothing, toiletries and the pandemic really made me see things in a different light though, it wasn't just the homeless that needed our support. Everybody, the whole community. And in January this year, we acquired a shop up in Boscombe, a nice cafe base split across two floors. Instantly, we we got that to cook for the homeless. Um, But having that place made me spread that net wide. It's about the humanity with us. We we do not allow religion to be practiced. We're very different from a lot of kitchens. We're not. We're not in cahoots with any religion it is literally about hu- humanity yeah basic as it says in the name yeah, yeah. basic humanity. i kind of get that i kind of get that when you just want to just feed people and have nothing else coming between people and getting the food uh, you don't want nobody to feel uncomfortable because somebody's doing this and that like i get i kind of understand it it's yeah. quite simple. I'm treating people with dignity and respect. One thing we do pride ourselves on is we do this without prejudice or question. I'm getting mixed reports as I go around Bournemouth about whether homelessness is on the rise or the decrease. Apparently the there were more people visibly on the streets a few years ago, but is, is that the full story of the problem? Uh, I would say that the problem is rising exponentially at this moment in time. And we're dealing with people that shouldn't generally be using our services, but having to. We're dealing with people that out, not your norm. We've got pensioners coming using our street kitchens because the services aren't there for the pensioners. More people are and they've for paid impact. for these services yeah. all, their all lives. their lives. A pension isn't a benefit, it's something that they've paid for and are, and are entitled to, yeah. you know. It's just the poor people that suffer every time and the services that get removed we're supposed to be one of the biggest economic countries in the world and we treat our own natural people like shit our standing as one of the powerhouses of the world is definitely changing and you can see that all around us today yeah i don't think that there's enough support or services for the homeless and there's certainly not not a clear understanding of what homelessness is. What you get is prejudged. Um, you're a junkie, you're an addict. And what I found, because I've been doing this for a long time now, is that the biggest cause of homelessness is relationship breakdowns, family breakdowns. The males usually throw out the family home and let to the friend for themselves. When that happens... I got a friend that he was in a 10-year, 11-year relationship, got a home with a girl, uh, daughter and she just decided one day that she didn't want to be in that relationship and he had to leave the home but he took her to court he had money he took her to court and the judge said hey the house is valued at 300k you got to give him half period <laughs> yeah that's that he's right though generally they'll start to lose a job they'll lose the confidence they'll spiral then they'll then they'll start jumping around with a crew and they'll go into bad habits. Um, I understand the drink, I've been homeless myself. Um, the drink in the winter months is, is sometimes the only reason you can get your head down. You know, you have to numb yourself to get asleep on the night. One of the reasons I make these films is because I like to give um, people to understand that every homeless person is a person. There's a yes, human stuff. Now, low-key, ever since I started watching Window, I, I knew that already, but, like, it's... Like I see it 
more for sure oh, right? like as a human his message is definitely getting across what he's trying to do narrative these days especially with the cost of living crisis people are closer to that Much than closer. they realize when you're paying half of your salary for your rented accommodation it's it's just fundamentally wrong not yeah. just is the system broken but the safety nets yeah uh, just smashed the bets they've been chopped up so is there any way that the people that watch the video can donate food or help uh, we are humans in any way yes um, we're a registered charity now we became a registered charity early on in the year we're trying to purchase the building that we're in because the landlord's going up for sale um, so that's our biggest challenge at the minute, trying to raise £125,000 to secure the future of what we do way past my lifetime, you know, because I won't be here forever and I want to make sure that even, the legacy on even when I'm funds. gone, this, this carries on. Yeah. You know. yeah. So is there a website? Um, or like a we Facebook.com slash groups slash we are humans. A site we are humans at out, we are humans one or outlook.com. Yep. Um, email. I'll, I'll get you some paraphernalia. Yeah, I can put minute. all uh, link we in the description a, below the video. We so have people a charity bank account as well where you can donate money. Yep, so if you pass me the details on details in <laughs> If you can folks, if you're that way inclined, then um, Yeah, I think we've got the point, man. Salute to Window Man. He's been across. He's showed us some stuff. Oh, wait. Yeah. That organization in any way that you can. Yeah, I sleep here. Yeah. And it's fucking cold. Do they turf you out often? Like, or do yeah, they can do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm still sort of wet from last night. Yeah. yeah. So my bed is soaking wet. And yeah, people just don't realize, mate. They just don't fucking realize. Yeah. Is there anything that you say to people that watch the videos about how. Give us a chance. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't try us all the same brush. Don't, don't, don't judge us before you get to know us, you know what I mean? We're not all bad people, you know what I mean? Thank you, Wendell. I appreciate it, man. Tell her, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, I'm gone.